Hey, welcome to the Midnight Quilt Show. Tonight, we're on point with a fun pattern that uses bold prints, easy piecing, and plenty of room for free motion quilting. I can't wait, so let's get started. So I have everything I need to get started tonight, and it's in my, my special box that I keep hidden from the rest of my family. I have the background fabric for this quilt, and I also have the rest of my fabric, some thread, and a few snacks to get me through the night. I think that should be almost enough. For the on-point quilt, I'm using this pre-cut strips of Boundless Flower Shop. Beautiful floral prints I can't wait to get started using. And of course, my favorite part of any project is the first unveiling of the fabric. Now the pattern that I'm working with is actually very similar to the Strip City, one that I've done before, but I loved it so much I thought it'd be fun to do it again with a little twist and then spend a little bit more time on the machine quilting. Now if you want to quilt along with me, you can find the information to this free pattern in the description box below. So I'm loving the bright, beautiful prints, the beautiful florals, and the cheery colors that are just saying, please sew with me. But that's enough of fondling fabric, it's time to get sewing. So for the blocks, I need to make a strip unit, which has the two pre-cut strips, but I have to do a little bit of cutting, but it's fine. I'm gonna use this background fabric, which is gonna be used throughout the whole quilt, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut my nice wide strip. Sorry, I have to count to make sure I actually am cutting it the right size. Oh, sometimes I crack myself up. So what my unit is gonna look like is I'll have my background and then two prints randomly picked. Of course, I'm trying to make it as scrappy as I can do. Now, just time to sew it together. Before I sew, a little snack. I love the little sayings. Angela, your seams will be perfect. Hmm. I like that. All right. Way off. Two down, one to go. Now that, I think, is a beautiful strip unit. This is so my kind of piecing. Nice and easy and straight but I actually have one seam left to do. It may seem kind of weird, but I'm gonna fold it over on itself and sew it completely together. So I finished sewing and I either have a really cute scarf or the first strip unit to my quilt. And since it's not the midnight scarf show, I guess I'll keep going with uh, the quilt. So what I'm gonna do is lay it here and I'm gonna start cutting into it. Now it's still that same strip unit that's completely sewn together. And I'm gonna take my ruler and lay it on here so that that line is along that bottom seam. And that's just helping me make sure that this angle is correct. So once I have it in place, my line on the seam, my nice angle, I'm gonna take a deep breath and cut it and hope that I'm doing this right. Now when I go to do the next one, I'm gonna line my row up with the top seam so it's gonna be flipping directions. And there I have the first block of my strip. And I'm gonna keep doing that, thinking about how cute this is gonna look when it's finally finished. You're gonna tell the blocks are starting to look different because I'm rotating the direction I'm cutting, and that's good, that's actually what it's supposed to be doing. And even if it isn't, that's what I'm gonna say it's supposed to be doing. How pretty is that? Just love how I can sew three quick seams and have a bunch of fun blocks. This is definitely my kind of piecing. Now each strip unit should give you four blocks each of the two different kinds. So once that's done, all that's left to do is open them up. Now when I lay the block in front of me, it still has a little bit of sewing right here that's keeping it together like a little secret. But I can pull it apart and open it like a fun little present. And there is my first block. Now I'm just gonna do the same with all of them. Now I have two sets of blocks that are the same, but different. And all I have left to do is to iron them and trim them, then I can start making my block. Now these cuties are ready to be put together. Now for each block, I need two. So here you can see I have two of the same blocks ready to go. And what I'm going to do is just rotate them and line them up like that. And that makes one block for my quilt. I love how it makes this little V right there. Of course, I'm easily amused, so that does help and you can see what the second version is gonna look like. Now, if I wanted to, I could be crazy and mix it up and you know, make them look like that, but I'm not going to. You know why? Because the pattern says not to do that, and I'm a rule follower. I'm gonna do what it says to do. I'm just gonna fold them together and go ahead and sew them along that seam. So here are two of my blocks, and I need to make a bunch more of those so I can make my quilt. So I'll do that, and I'll show you how they go together. Each row has six blocks. I'm gonna sew those blocks together, add some borders, and then I'll have my finished quilt. I love the beautiful colors of the quilt, and I especially love the scrappy layout of it. 
how it required no thinking on my part. Now I have to base this quilt sandwich so that I can get to the quilting. I love to use fusible batting when making my quilt sandwiches. First, I lay down the backing, lay the batting sticky side up, then lay out the top. Using an iron it helps hold it all together. Since this quilt is so easy to put together, I get to spend a little bit more time showing you how I like to quilt my quilts. So here's the block. What I love to do is first start with the walking foot. That allows me to get nice, precise, straight lines without a lot of effort, which is great this late after midnight. Then I'm gonna use actual points on the blocks as reference points that I can use for the quilting so that I don't have to do any marking, which is another win for late night quilting. Now you could just quilt one block at a time, but I'm gonna join several blocks because it's a more efficient way of quilting. I'm gonna go from one point to inside to the point and then do the same on the opposite side of the next block. What that allows me to do is quilt nice, long, straight lines so I don't have to reposition the quilt so much. Then, when I'm ready to come back, I can do the same on the opposite side, going from point to point, kind of guesstimating about an inch within that next corner, and coming back. Now, the benefit of this is, like I said, it's a more efficient way to do it. Those lines always cross at these points, which makes my quilting look perfect-ish or Let's just say mediocre-ish. Either way, it's gonna look great. So I can't wait to get started. Pivot, lift the foot and rotate the quilt. Again, I'm trying to get the quilt lined up in the direction that makes this all easier. And go on to my next point. Now when I'm ready to do the opposite side of my blocks, I can either rotate the whole quilt around or cut thread and go back to the starting point and do the opposite side, which is what I think I'm gonna do here. So I went ahead and quilted a series of blocks so that you can see what this is looking like. Nice straight lines that go from point to point. Well, they're more like straight-ish, but that definitely works for me. Now if I wanted to add a little bit more quilting to it, which I do because I love to quilt them a lot, usually I say add too much quilting and then put out a little bit more, but I'm going to do the same thing but just have my lines echo within the one I've just quilted. So same basic idea, just a different ending point. So in this block, you can see I've quilted two rows of those lines and I love how it's turning out. So now I'm gonna throw some curves into this on point quilt. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just cracked myself up. So since the free motion quilting foot is on, my hands are doing all the controlling here. So let's see if I can channel my, my curvy, curvy sole or something like that. A line that curves out into that point. I'm trying to put my eye where I want to end up at. I'm not worrying so much about the curve itself, just where it ends up at. Okay, it looks like I need a little bit more practice, so I'm gonna keep on going. I know what the problem is. I need to loosen up a little bit. Sometimes I get so tense trying to quilt those lines perfectly curved, so let me find what I did with my drink. In free motion quilting, sometimes trying harder isn't the answer. It's relaxing and just having fun with it. Now that should go on a chocolate wrapper right there. Yes. 
So as you can see, I've quilted my curvy lines. I love how they kind of look like a flower, which brings the whole theme of the fabric together. And I guess if that looks like a flower, then that would look kind of like a pointy flower pot thing. Well, now if you wanna quilt along with me, I've drawn out all the quilting diagrams so you can see exactly what I've placed where, and you can find that information in the description box below. Now I have a lot of these blocks to quilt, so it's time to power up and get them done. Oh, shoot. Maybe too much power. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I had such a good time working on a quilt that was easy to piece, which meant I had more time for the quilting. Using the walking foot and the free motion quilting foot resulted in some fun quilting that left me plenty of time for snacking. In fact, I think I deserve a treat. Let's see what the chocolate has to say. Those who subscribe to the Midnight Quilt Show will find happiness. Oh, so make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much and I'll see you later.